What's going on? Vital Potato here, the commentator. I'm bringing you guys my Battlefield 4 wish list video. Now, if you guys want to join in on the conversation, feel free to leave any comments down below with wishes you guys might have for Battlefield 4. We can get a discussion going on features we want to see or things we want to see changed, and I'll make sure to read through those. So let's start with the first thing that I would like to see changed, and that has to do with the, the balancing of the kits. I feel like in Battlefield 3, the assault rifle kit is overpowered, and you can even see this in the stats if you go on battle log. Almost the majority of players have the assault class as their most used class, and typically it's by a, a very large percentage and I think that's slightly because the, the assault rifle class has the best all-around weapons and he also has the ability to heal himself and revive teammates. Reviving te teammates is the easiest way to get points. You can get points, I mean it's 100 points basically instantly and also being able to heal yourself you can go into every gunfight with 100% health and it just gives you a huge advantage over somebody that might already be damaged. So I feel like that in combination of having the best all-around weapons is too powerful. And I feel like in Battlefield Bad Company 2, the balance was a little bit better, where the assault rifle kit had the ammo and the C4, and the medical kit had the light machine guns. I wish that you know they would switch that back. I've also heard some people say that they really like the weapon or the class balance in Battlefield 2. I'd be fine for that as well, just as long as they tweak it in some way, because right now I feel like the assault kit is overpowered. Moving on to the next thing is throwing C4. I feel like you should be able to throw it farther than you can in Battlefield 3. It, it, it just, it's a little bit, in Battlefield Bad Company 2, you could throw it a little bit too far, especially when you like jump throw it. Um, but I do wish you could throw it a little bit farther than you can in Battlefield 3. Next, I want to talk about weapon balance, because this has always been an issue with every first person shooter. But I want them to learn from their mistakes. They need to release this game with basically no issues, no overpowered weapons. And they need to take what they've learned with Battlefield 3, they need to look at the, the detailed statistics that people like Simthic are doing and see exactly is there any weapon that is overpowered, they need to make them all as balanced as they possibly can. And there's also ways to, uh, of, of tweaking this with having an alpha and a beta and doing lots of weapon tweaking during those times. And also just doing a lot of patching and things like that uh, and getting uh, feedback from the community because I think they did a pretty good job with Battlefield 3, but there was always a couple guns that were a little bit overpowered and a couple of weapons that were a little bit underpowered. And this is always a really, really hard thing to uh, get perfect. I don't think really any game ever has, um, but hopefully they can get it a little bit better than they had it with Battlefield 3, although it wasn't that bad in Battlefield 3. The next thing is nerfing reviving. I think that either defibrillators should have some type of cooldown effect, so you can't just defibrillate people instantly over and over and over. I think maybe you could do a recharge thing where you have to go to an ammo uh, drop um, from one of the uh, assault kits and have to get batteries or something for your defibrillator, uh, so you can only use a certain set amount of times. Or maybe not having instant revive, so maybe having a syringe and you have to stick somebody with a syringe so you're exposed for a couple seconds. Because I don't like the way it is in Battlefield 3, where if one of your teammates goes down, you can just run out in the open, defibrillate him instantly, and get behind cover in a matter of seconds. Uh, it's really frustrating too, especially when you take out a guy, he gets revived, you take out another guy, he gets revived, take out another guy, he gets revived. And that happens all the time, especially on the, the infantry focused maps where a lot of people are playing with the assault kit. The next thing is I want more team deathmatch support. Now, I know this isn't necessarily the most popular game mode among Battlefield players. I know a lot of people love Conquest and things like that, and some people will say that team deathmatch doesn't belong in Battlefield. I would disagree. Team deathmatch, I think, is one of my favorite game modes in any first-person shooter, and I like that they have it in Battlefield 3, and I know a lot of other people do too, because that's one of the most popular game modes that people are running on their servers. But right now, in Battlefield 3, it seems like that was kind of just tacked on and it feels like the maps weren't designed very well for Team Deathmatch. Some of them are too big, some of them are too open, some of them don't have enough cover, some of them are too tight. There's really only like two or three that people actually play, and those are typically Car Island and um, uh, Canals and maybe Metro or maybe uh, Scene Crossing. But other than that, most people don't play any of the other Team Deathmatch uh, maps, and I hope that they can do a little bit better job with designing the maps and choosing the right location for you know the larger scale maps to choose for Team Deathmatch. And the next thing is an option to remove the color tint. Now you can do this on the PC with a couple different third party tools, although some people have been uh, kicked from the game with Punk Buster because you know, they th think that they're hacking. And they've also you know, removed this, I think in the most recent patch, but there, there needs to be a default option in the settings to turn off on every platform, not just on PC. And that goes for the blue tint that's in the default game and also the orange tint that they've added with Aftermath. 
All right, the next thing is custom server limitations. All right, so custom servers are awesome. I love that you can have rent customer servers and do whatever you want with it, and I think that's good, but there should be limitations. For example, right now and over the past you know months that Battlefield 3 has been out, almost all of the servers are not running default settings. They're all trying to get you as most points as you possibly can as quickly as possible. So things like instant vehicle spawning, super high ticket counts, and kicking people for really stupid rules. And I think this is more the kicking problem. I think is more on the on the um, the console side of things. I've seen posts on Reddit of of screenshots where people are joining servers that has like a list of like 40 different things that are banned in that server. And if you use one of those things, you get kicked from the server instantly. I don't think that you, they should be able to do that. Um, and I also don't think that there should there should be able to have like super high ticket counts, like 3,000 tickets or something like that, because. Seriously, that game's gonna take like two hours to finish. That's just kind of frustrating, especially when all of the servers are like that, and it's like, you know, you can't find any servers that are actually normal default settings. Now, I don't necessarily mind that people can to customize them like that, but if they if they can, there still needs to be default like Dice or EA hosted servers that have the default normal settings for normal people that want to play with normal settings. Uh, I don't know if you guys agree with that, but I'm somebody that doesn't want to play instant respawn, instant vehicle spawn, and like 10,000 tickets every time. But anyway, moving on to the next thing is better co-op. Now the co-op in Battlefield 3 is arguably pretty poor. There were a couple different levels, there were a couple different difficulties, There was it was kind of story driven, but overall I think it was kind of a poor experience. It was kind of just tacked on the end. So a couple things that I think they could do to improve co-op is maybe do what they're doing with that and just have more options, more levels and things to do. But I also think a really cool idea would be some type of survival mode where you have to fend off as many enemies and move, move from location to location. You can play all the different multiplayer maps, uh, kind of like the uh, cooperative uh, system that they had in Battlefield Bad Company 2. Uh, that was part of the DLC. And also maybe a dino survival mode. I mean, that's something that everybody would want with, with Battlefield 4 or with Battlefield 3 Endgame expansion is some type of dinosaur survival. That would be really, really awesome, having to fend off dinosaurs and you know survival like that or just having some kind of an open world map survival type of thing where um you know you're trying to fight off enemies and also you're you know scarce on ammo you're maybe trying to survive as long as you can maybe it's round based there's a bunch of different options a bunch of different ways they could go with that but something more than just the co-op that they gave us in battlefield 3 because it, it doesn't last very long it's not very fun and uh, it's kind of poor anyway moving on to the next thing is a battle recorder this is obvious something that everybody's wanted with battlefield for quite a while have the ability to record gameplay uh, maybe render out gameplay, maybe do some simple editing on all platforms, PC, Xbox, uh, PS3. Uh, modding tools. Now, I understand that there can be issues with modding tools because this can lead to increasing in hackers and things like that, but at least give us map editing tools. At least give us the ability to make custom maps, uh, You know, choose spawn points, do terrain editing, place objects around the map, uh, things like that. And maybe even have a really cool system where we can design maps and the best ones are chosen in a contest and those ones are released as DLC. You maybe charge like $10 for 10 maps and then you give some of the, uh, like a percentage of, of the money that you guys receive to the people who actually design the maps. You know, there's, So there's actually incentive to you know make really good maps and keep them updated and things like that. So I think having map tools is a must if, if not having you know a full array of custom modding tools. Next thing is to do a spa, uh, squad spawning. Uh, there needs to be a, a the, the, you, you shouldn't be able to spawn on people if they're in danger. So kind of the way they have it in Medal of Honor Warfighter where you can still spawn on you know your fire team buddy. I mean, it's kind of similar to, I guess, a squad in Battlefield 3, but you can't spawn on them if they're in danger, being shot at or shooting. Because the problem is, let's say your your squad mate is about to die, somebody's shooting at him, and you spawn on him instantly, that's not fair for the person that's shooting him. So it ruins the game for him. Or if you're, uh, you do the exact same thing and you spawn in and you get killed, it's not fun for you because you just died instantly right when you spawned in because you spawned in a dangerous area where your, your teammate was getting shot at. So I think that there needs to be, uh, they should limit the ability of spa uh, spawning in your squad mates if they're in danger, you know, shooting their gun, being shot at, things like that. All right, moving on to the next thing is a shooting range. There should be you should be able to maybe do like a, a solo area where you can shoot at targets and things like that to test out you know your your aiming skills maybe before you get ready to go into multiplayer. Maybe you're a new player or maybe just to test out different weapons, test out different attachments, things like that. So you can kind of feel get a feel for all the different weapons before you jump in or maybe you just want to test things out. 
Uh, also, it'd be kind of cool if we had a similar thing for flying or driving area, uh, like a test area where you could, you know, get used to the controls for jets and helicopters or tanks or whatever type of vehicle you want to use. That way you don't have to jump into a public server and, you know, take a jet and then just crash it or something like that because that would be pretty frustrating for you and also everybody on your team that, you know, lost that jet or lost that helicopter because you crashed it. All right, now there's also a couple things that we should be able to do in between games. That means at the end of the game, when you're looking at the scoreboard, you're waiting for the next map to load. So first of all, you should be able to change your loadout. You should be able to swap out your weapons, attachments, uh, squad perks, things like that. You should be able to change those in between each game. You should also be able to see what, what the next map is and also what the next game mode is in between each game. Another thing is we also need to have native VoIP or voice over IP support on the PC. I don't know about the other platforms, but on the PC there needs to be some type of built-in voice over IP and the ability to mute people, maybe mute everybody other than your squad or mute everybody uh, period or something like that or mute everybody except for your friends or something like that so you can control who's actually talking in their mic so you don't get really annoyed by that. Next thing is a couple different customization options. So the first one is more uh, camos for your weapons. Uh, that way, I mean, in B Battlefield 3, there's like one or two camos for like three or four different guns, and that's not acceptable. I think there should be like 10 camos, and you can put any camo on any gun, maybe even more camos than that. Maybe have user generated camos, and you could give those away as like a DLC type of thing, too, where you know you could vote on which, which camos are the coolest. Um, I think that would be pretty cool. And then also maybe having more attachments as well to put on your weapon. Another thing is character customization, being able to choose things like gender, the camo you're wearing, what outfit you're wearing, face paint, you know, the way your face is structured, all those type of things I think would be really, really cool to maybe give you a customized character and give you a different look than every other character on the battlefield. Because right now it's like, every assault rifle guy looks the exact same or every medic guy looks the exact same or every support guy looks the exact same. And I think it should be a lot more distinguished between each player. The next thing is destruction. So there needs to be a lot more destruction, um, at least as much as they had in Bad Battlefield Bad Company 2 where you can take down most of the buildings in the map. Um, even more of the destruction than that would be really, really cool as well. Uh, also, there should be an on-screen slash overhead supply request. And what I mean by that is, let's say you need ammo and a guy on your team has ammo and he's right next to you. You spot him, you know, you press Q on the, on the PC and you ask for request ammo. All it really does in-game is say, hey, I need some ammo. Well, that's not enough. There should be an indicator on that person's screen over maybe over your head that says this person needs ammo. So that way they know to give them ammo because there's a lot of the times when you need health or you need ammo or you need somebody to help you uh, do something else in the game and they don't reply because they don't even know you're requesting it. Maybe because they have their audio off or they have their audio really low or they're just distracted or something like that. There needs to also be a way to limit this because you obviously don't want to just walk around and say, you know, over and over I need ammo to spam people's screens. So maybe only do it when you actually need ammo or when you're low on health. You can only ask them and the only time you can ask, so you ask for health, things like that. So... Uh, but some way that you can actually see it on your screen. Uh, the next thing is a commander mode. This is not this is something that I necessarily want personally, but I know it's something that a lot of other people have wanted for a while, so I wouldn't mind having it back in the game. Um, also, you shouldn't be able to revive people after you do a knife takedown, because that's kind of stupid that you you know revive somebody right after they get knifed in the throat. I mean, it's stupid that they get revived with a defibrillator with a shot or you know getting shot in the face or something in the first place, but um, maybe even if you get a headshot, they couldn't be revived. I think that'd be pretty cool as well. Um, there also needs to be an animation for getting in and out of vehicles. There should not be an instant eject. This is one of the most frustrating things for anybody that plays with vehicles. You know, you spend, you know, a good amount of time and effort taking out a jet. Maybe you're in a, another jet or maybe you're on the ground with some type of anti-air. And the guy just jumps out instantly and he parachutes down and you don't get a kill. That is retarded. There needs to be some type of timer or animation that's that gives, you know, if you shoot them down, they shouldn't just be able to eject out. Same thing with tanks. If you're about to blow up a tank with an RPG and he's at like 2% and he jumps out and runs away right before it blows up, that is not the way it should work. There should be some type of animation so that if they're crawling out of the tank and it blows up, they die too. Uh, and then the last thing I want to mention is more blood and more gore. I think it would be really cool if you could be able to like, shoot people's limbs off or maybe if you shoot them in their head, their head explodes and blood goes everywhere. Maybe shoot people's legs off or shoot their arms off. Things like that I think would be really, really cool. Uh, although I don't know how that would affect things like being revived. Maybe you get revived and you only have like one leg and you have to limp around or get revived and you have one arm so you can use as like a pistol or something. But anyway, I think those would be some really cool additions to and changes to Battlefield 4. I know it was quite a long video and uh, my voice is starting to get hoarse. Um, <laughs> but hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, feel free to give me a like or a favorite. Remember to leave any comments down below about suggestions or wishes that you have for Battlefield 4. 
But that's all for me. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.